after season, year after year, giants in Calaveras Big Tree State Park were free to grow and were largely left undisturbed by man. But that all changed in the spring of 1852 when Augustus T. Dowd stumbled on the giants while tracking a wounded grizzly bear. Came across this tree, it was the first way to persuade people to come up and see it for themselves. They believed it, they saw it, word spread. So this was the tree that got giant sequoias really famous. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, for more than 170 years, tourists have been traveling to what is now known as Calaveras Big Tree State Park to experience the giant sequoias for themselves. So this is technically the longest running tourist attraction in California. Really? Yeah. Whether you're in snowshoes or hiking boots, the 1.7 mile walking trail doesn't disappoint. And if you're lucky, you might get Lily Orovitz as your guide. That's a big tree. It's a very big tree. It is the biggest giant sequoia we have in the North Grove. This is the Empire Tree, and when Lily says it's the biggest, she's not just talking about height, but overall size or girth. So it is about 30 feet across in the bottom, its diameter. But the real key for bigness for giant sequoias is just how wide it stays. And if you look to the very top of this tree, you can see it stays pretty wide as you go up for quite a ways. Sequoias are the largest by volume in the world, but not the tallest in the world. That title goes to the sequoia's cousin, the coastal redwood, which lives in a totally different climate. If you're in the Sierra Nevada mountains, you're looking at giant sequoias. If you're down the coastline-ish, within the coast, I should say, you're looking at coast redwoods. One of the most iconic trees in the park is actually a dead one, known as the Big Stump or Discovery Tree, named after Augustus Dowd, the man who found it while hunting a bear. So it took men 22 days to drill holes through the bottom of this tree to cut it down, and you can see those holes right there. The technology back then, you couldn't cut down a tree with a saw. So what they had were pump augers and those drilled holes and so you can see those lines are all the holes they drilled into the tree. The stump eventually became a tourist attraction itself. It was a dance floor, yeah, you can find old pictures. There was a gazebo on top of it. Sequoias can live upwards of 3,000 years, and a mature sequoia's roots can occupy over an acre of earth. And what's interesting about their roots is that they don't go deep like other trees. They only go down about 12 feet, and many of the roots are often visible on the surface. All right, so the tree behind me here fell in 1965. Trees of this size are estimated to be about 2,600 tons. That's about the same weight as 18 blue whales. Social media wasn't around in the 1800s, but if it was, the father of the forest tree would definitely have been a picture for the gram. This hollowed out tree provides a pretty awesome tunnel that you can walk through. Now, no matter what time of year, the father of the forest is a crowd favorite, but if you come during winter, there's a special little treat for you. You'll get to see all of these icicles form all the way down the center here. It makes for quite the picture. You may think rot is what caused the tunnel in this tree to form, but Lily says it's more likely caused by fire. It varies a lot depending on which specific forest you're looking at, but there could be a fire that goes through a giant sequoia forest every about seven to 30 years. Small fires are actually good for giant sequoias. In 2023, Cal Fire and State Parks intentionally set a prescribed fire to burn up debris and reduce fuel on the forest floor. This is relatively safe because giant sequoias have a defense mechanism. This is a very thick bark here. Yeah, yeah, it's two feet thick at its thickest. Two feet? Yeah, and it's not thick all the way to the top. Sometimes fires get past the sequoia's bark and it will burn the middle of the tree, but Lily says sequoias often heal themselves. 100 years, 200 years, 50 years, eventually it'll completely seal over and there'll just be a little hollow section of the tree that we'll never know about. Another famous fallen tree is the Pioneer's Cabin Tree. A hole was sawn out in the trunk of the tree in the 1880s, big enough for a car to drive through. But on January 8th, 2017, a windstorm knocked the tree over. So just by chance, I actually was here January 7th, 2017, the day before the Pioneer's Cabin Tree fell over. When it did fall over on the 8th, it was a sad day, but this tree has now moved on to the next phase of its life cycle. 
eventually they'll fall over or they're currently decomposing anyway and then they'll fall over and put those nutrients back in the soil. Humans, more specifically non-indigenous humans, are the sequoia's biggest threat. Logging significantly decreased their population in the past, but now climate change and intense superfires are threatening the trees, like the fires that happened at Sequoia National Park in 2021. They might have died, they might have made it. We could have lost up to 19% of all giant sequoias from those two fires. So if that's the case, we're down to about 60,000 or so giant sequoias, which is not, they are an endangered species technically. Giant sequoias only grow on a small portion of the Sierra Nevada, making them unique to California. It's no wonder visitors are inspired by them, but they also need to be respectful. That's our whole goal here. We want you to care about them, and then maybe you can care for them because this is your public lands. We're at California State Parks. This is you. This is yours. From Calaveras Big Tree State Park, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads.